everybody. Welcome to this week, uh, Reading Smoke with Phil Jose. And uh, you can see behind me, if you're a regular uh, visitor to my site and tune in regularly, you can see I'm in a different spot here. Uh, I'm out on the road. And uh, it's good. It should have a good feed and good stream and all that kind of stuff today. So a uh, really interesting uh, case study this week. I think it's uh, really a um, I, I really enjoyed it. I think it's got um, a lot to learn from and a lot of different stuff that we can take away from this particular set of videos. Hey, uh, first, I, um, if, you're, if you're streaming live, uh, go ahead and you can hit me up on the chat, ask a question or just say hi or whatever. I'd appreciate that. Uh, we've got a lot of new subscribers this week, which is great. Uh, but first and foremost, I want to this uh, uh, give a shout out to Dave Statter and his website. It's in the show notes. If you haven't checked out Dave Statter's site, man, you have got to go there. It is just a really great resource for all kinds of great video and articles about what's going on in the fire service, good and bad. But I mean, a really, really comprehensive site. It's a lot of good stuff there. Uh, both of these videos, there's links on Dave Statter's site. So if you want to check out these videos, which I highly recommend, um, you can listen to the audio. You can see what's going on with the firefight. It's, uh, I think it's a really uh, quality uh, set of videos um, for learning tactics, strategy, and, of course, <laughs> my thing, reading smoke, right? And so um, this week, though, just go to Dave Statter's site if you haven't been there. Uh, Statter 911. If you just type in Dave Statter uh, with two T's and Statter, S T A T T E R, you will definitely find him because he's big on the web. All right. Uh, new subscribers this week. I uh, want a uh, real shout out uh, this week to the subscribers. I really appreciate everybody who is subscribing. And, and if you can help spread the word, I'm really, um, the reason I'm pushing for subscribers really is to get the SBSK and the Reading Smoke message out. Uh, and apparently when you hit a thousand subscribers, um, for whatever reason within YouTube, that sort of uh, kicks you over the top. And so th that will mean a lot of more people get access to this content. And uh, that's what I really want is to be able to spread the Reading Smoke message. I love teaching it, and I'm looking forward to uh, classes uh, um, this fall coming up. Channel View, Texas, Squim, Washington, going to uh, um, the Buffalo area, uh, Pennsylvania, Ohio, Wisconsin. It's going to be a lot of fun. I uh, hope to see you out there. And if you're a subscriber and you come to one of my classes, please come up and say hello. Right? I mean, I, I just love meeting people and love talking about fire and reading smoke. So. Uh, thanks to uh, Warren Bost, uh, Richard Ballard, uh, Corey Evans, uh, Phil, I think it's uh, Housier or Housier. I like your first name, though, Phil. It's a good one. Uh, Marty Parker, A3 Mel K, uh, Joseph Steffes, uh, Michael Boussange, and Medic1197. So thanks to everybody for tuning in and... Um, if you like chatting, let me know, but let's get started. So what we did with this one is, is I uh, want to look at this video coming in. This is a chief officer coming in, and you can see pretty significant, even if we go all the way back here, right, um, pretty significant call in the smoke. And we talked about this a couple weeks ago about um, sort of where it's sort of uh, thin smoke up here at the top but much thicker right here. And that's indicating to us a, a significant increase in fire behavior over a short period of time, right? Both the, the volume um, and the color here, right? Uh, probably could see some velocity if you, it's not as good on the video as I would hope, but um, just because of the distance away, it's a kind of a cool rainy day. So it's gonna take a lot of energy out of that smoke quickly, uh, but you can see it's boiling and churning here a little bit, right? So pretty significant um, sign right away just based on the column and this is where if you if your department has some sort of a working fire designation in Seattle um, there's a response that goes out and then if you have a working fire you just say it's a working fire on the radio and that indicates to dispatch that you need some additional resources uh, the um, city light which is the electric utility uh, 
washing natural gas up there, right, to come in. And uh, we turn the gas off, but they like to be there, check for leaks, uh, interact with the homeowner, right? So it's really some customer service stuff, plus it's some additional fire resources. And so if you're seeing this on your way in, um, if you did, if you were able to take care of that before you arrived, right, when we're just preloading, right, we're getting, we're getting stuff off our plate uh, prior to our arrival. So good deal, Hill, but we're going to come in and I want you to think about this fire and how it developed prior to your arrival, because we're going to watch a video of that, right, some, some arrival video from before these other fire units were there. Now, as you pull in here, uh, really, you can see that there's stretching lines, there's a, a, a medic unit or an A-car box or whatever you call it back here. Uh, that looks to me like they've completed the 360 just because the way they're parked. Uh, so these are some things I'm just picking up, um, you know, as I'm coming in and I'm taking a look at the scene. Uh, I do want to get to the VVDC, but I want to see these other things that are happening and what's going on with this tactics and strategy, right? So... But as far as volume, velocity, density, color, we have a pretty pretty significant volume. So high volume, turbulent, thick black smoke coming out. Now, the thing that's really interesting to me at the front end of this is what I don't see. And what I don't see is a bunch of smoke pushing out of the eaves, even down here where the, where the fire is most significant. And even from this one, I can tell, like, you see this smoke, turbulent, thick black smoke, that's high velocity, right, coming out of that... Um, capped opening but right along the line right you see another one here another one here we can read that there's more on the building here but these ones have uh, fire coming out and in fact that fire is a uh, uh, right temperature right mix because coming off of it is almost no smoke at all right almost no smoke at all coming off of that flame tip we can take a look at that as we're coming in and uh, so pretty clean both of those uh, sets of flames right pretty clean burn there and so um you know so there's good mix but down here there's a lot more fuel than there is oxygen available right so as this fire is moving down um it's uh working these spaces and in fact uh this is another area we can look at a reading court uh reading smoke shortcut which is the highest velocity from the most restricted opening or higher velocity from the same type of opening right and so we look at these openings, both the uh, ridge vent up here and these vents from the roof, right? We can say, look, these are all basically the same. And so the higher velocity we have, the closer to the seat of the fire. Now, just using it as a confirmation, right? I know where the where there's more fire just because I can see it here. But if, in fact, there wasn't clean burn coming out of here, I would look at there would be a higher velocity smoke coming from this area because it's it's closer to the seed or at the seat of the fire, right? So we can use these times when we can see multiple things to sort of confirm some of the things that um, we use for shortcuts in other applications, right? So the highest velocity, closest, highest velocity from the most restricted opening is going to be closest to the seat of the fire. And when you have a series of openings that are all the same, the higher velocity from that, those same openings closer to the seat of the fire, right? Velocity is the king of what's happening now, right? That's the king of what's happening now, and they're off to the races. So one of the things we want to do here, I'm just going to roll through it again as he comes in, and I want we're going to watch it for just a second. I want you to think about and project in your mind, what did this fire look like one minute ago, two minutes ago, three minutes ago, right? We want to learn um, how to project both backwards and forwards. Uh, forwards is to predict what we think is going to happen in the next few minutes, but backwards to get an understanding of what we think was going on prior to our arrival, right? The better understanding we have, uh, the better we can predict. All right, so we'll come in, we'll watch it, and then we're going to go and watch the second video that we have of this same fire. Come in, we can watch it for just a few seconds here as they as they get going. And if you go uh, to Dave's status site, you can watch this entire fire um, attack take place, right? So looking at this volume, velocity, density, color here, reading where, uh, where the higher velocity is closer to the seat of the fire, all those sorts of things. So let's go to the pre-arrival video. 
right? The, it's the other video that we have of this fire. And this is super early, right? This is uh, well before the fire department shows up. And uh, even from the still photo here, we can see that, you know, we've got those same holes. We've got the ridge vent. We've got a lot of stuff going on. And let's get it going. Go. We can see really a low volume of smoke right here. Look, it's a lot of white, right, because the steam coming out. So it's a rainy day. Right, so everything's all wet, so there's a lot of steam early on mixed in with the smoke. And we're going to watch as uh, the VVDC is all four of our smoke attributes increase, and we can see uh, turbulent smoke turning into fire like this is right here as, as it starts to burn. Now what's, what's interesting is right here you can see it's starting to push out of the eaves down here low. Let's take, let's, let me just take you back, right, take you back. Um, and so we can not just point that out, but have you watch for that smoke to come out of the eaves. You notice later there wasn't that, so we're going to watch that develop and then watch the change that takes place. Right, so what are we predicting is going to happen? What actually happens? What does that tell us, right? Our standard uh, mode. And just starting to see those wisps. And that volume is going to increase as this fire really gets quite um, a significant uh, increase, overall increase. We're going to see a lot of pressure, a lot of smoke coming out of here. This is going to grow very rapidly. Keep your eye over here, though. Ourselves things so high volume, high velocity, turbulent, right? Thick smoke here, but way thicker and way blacker up here. But notice it, it changes, right? So, um, this is my interpretation of what's going on here is that uh, the fire grows significantly, it starts pushing out, and then we have an increase in the availability of vent up high, and it, and it changes the way the air flows so that this goes from. At first, it's an intake, then it becomes an exhaust, and then it relatively quickly becomes an intake again. So let's go back, just watch through that. I just, these sorts of things, when you can get a chance to see them, I think are really valuable as far as uh, what you can predict or what you can understand about what's going to happen at other fires, right? This is a, a pitch roof, it's way bigger than a house in length, but in size, sideways, it's about the same, right? But um, so we can, we can take some uh, of these things and sort of project them out as to what might happen as these, as these holes open up, as the ridge vent gets going. And these go also, these, these holes here, they switch from being uh, all fuel to all fire back to all fuel again, based on the way that the, the um, airflow is going. But uh, we're going to see at the same time as we see this pressure down here, we're going to see a significant amount more fire and then more vent and a ton more smoke, right? A really significant increase in volume up here as that switches around. The ventilation flow path goes from being an exhaust at the eaves to being an intake at the eaves and all the smoke is coming out of the top. Right, that's going to look at this increase up here, really significant increase. Not sure exactly what happened other than maybe the ridge vent completely let go, or maybe some of these vents on this backside started going, but these all just sort of be, become mostly intakes with a little bit of exhaust. Now, the other thing that that can tell us, right, is that the, the, the likelihood, right, is, is this is mostly or almost completely in the attic and not in one of these hotel rooms. Now, you have hotel rooms on this side and you have the same setup on the Charlie side. So to know for sure, right, you'd have to go do that 360 to know if, if it maybe started in one of the units on the back side and then extended up into the attic or if it started in the attic, right? And um, that's why it's so important to get that early 360 and we can go back to, right, this command view 
And notice that uh, I'm just going to take it back a couple of clicks here, right, as we're coming in. Notice there, there is a little bit of smoke coming from the eaves over here, right? I didn't point this out earlier, so it's a very low um, on volume. But, and it doesn't appear to me to be enough coming out over here to indicate that there was a fire in one of the rooms over here. Um, there could have been, and certainly if, if you're over here and you're looking, like if you could read these windows and, and uh, you're on this Charlie side and you're reading the windows and one of these is just sooty, black, nasty, a bunch of steam and stuff on the inside or cracked, then you would know, right? You would know you had a fire that started in one of the rooms. And certainly that's something that command's going to want to know. Uh, they're going to want to know as they're stretching a line. But in this early phase, it doesn't appear to me, right, that there's enough smoke coming out over there that I would be um, worried that it started in the actual uh, rooms versus in the attic. This looks to me to be all attic smoke and a significant increase in all of our VVDC as they got going up here, right? Um, okay, so um, so a lot of good stuff here today. Uh, like I said, I really would appreciate it if you go over to Dave Statter's site, even subscribe. Uh, I mean, he he's got tons of tons of good stuff over there. Um, and I'll just let the the video run. Let these uh, crews show up. And this is in East Columbus, Ohio, and uh, we'll be there actually for. Um, uh, Firehouse World here coming up in a couple of weeks. I won't be teaching reading smoke there. I'll be teaching some command decision making, some chief officer development stuff. Um, but if you're there uh, and you um, want to say hi, come say hi to me at the pre-con. Love to see you there. And again, go to Dave Statter's site, check out this. And uh, with that, for the reading, for the art of reading smoke and uh, the reading smoke nation, I'm Phil Jost. And I want to thank you for being here.